Oh boy, this story <laughs> turned into a, probably my favorite story of all time. Stealth, technology, anti-gravity. Now it turns out, thanks to you guys, that this anti-gravity stuff with the B-2 bomber and a plasma shield around it is rubbish. But it's, it's, it's real, but it has a far more interesting history and a far more interesting future technology application. The plasma shield is a stealth effect that reflects radar and makes things disappear. I mean, think um, invisibility cloak, think Star Trek, stealth, you know, fantastic stuff. But its history and where it came from is my favorite. Guess what? It actually involves Chodrell Bank and Sputnik. Sputnik was actually launched on the year of my birth because I'm really old. Thank you. <laughs> so let's look at this incredible story of wrapping missiles, stealth aircraft, uh, submarines, uh, torpedoes, anything you want in plasma to make it disappear. Plasma. What exactly is plasma? Well, it's actually the fourth state of matter. We have solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Some early work was done using plasma as an invisibility cloak, but the real story broke when they launched Sputnik in October 1957. Sputnik changed the world. It was seen as a tremendous threat to the West that the Russians could put an object into orbit. Ever since the news of Sputnik flashed around the world, America has been asking questions. What went wrong? How did a nation of backward peasants forge so dramatically ahead of us in the race to space? I guess the American people alarmed that a foreign country, especially an enemy country, can do this. And if we fear this. We fear that they have something out that majority of the people don't know about. Senator Jackson of Washington describes the Russian achievement as a devastating blow to the prestige of the United States. The people of the United States have been humiliated, they're disturbed, and they're unhappy. The enemy of ours has outdistanced us. Russia's getting into space really bothers me. We are headed downhill to the status of a second-rate world power. In the United Kingdom, the partially built radio telescope at Jodrell Bank was finished by government money to watch the orbits of Sputnik and to observe its re-entry. What they saw when the tiny football-sized craft re-entered the Earth's atmosphere is the basis of everything we're talking about today. We're at 3 minutes 20 seconds since entry. Uh, blackout should end about 3 minutes 53 seconds uh, after entry. We all remember that when manned space missions re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, there was a time when communication was cut off due to the heat and plasma surrounding their craft during re-entry. Apollo 11, Houston, through a Raya 4. Well, it turns out this Plasma, which is superheated gas, is almost like an invisibility shield. So back in 1957, when they saw the little Sputnik re-enter, they saw the satellite literally disappear from view. As a side note, 
a later Sputnik actually crashed into a street in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, where every year they have a Sputnik festival. But back to the plasma story, it was surrounded by superheated gas and it's blocked by some mechanism, the radar view from Jodrell Bank. This was top secret and launched a whole industry into possibly making bigger stuff disappear. So once this cloaking device had been discovered, it was used. During Project Oxcart, which we all know as the SR-71, but it's actually the Lockheed A-12 reconnaissance aircraft, the CIA funded an attempt to reduce the A-12's inlet cones of its engine using Project Kempster. This used an electron beam generator to create a cloud of ionization in the front of each engine inlet. We know the system was flight tested, but we don't think it was deployed. In 1992, Hughes Research Laboratory conducted a research project to study electromagnetic wave propagation in unmagnetized plasma. A series of high voltage spark gaps were used to generate UV radiation, which creates plasma via photoionization. They filled missile radarms to see if they could attenuate a radar reflection. At the same time, a study looked at the atmospheric plasma pressures for weapon re entry. This was tricky stuff, but teams went on to design a stealth device for combat aircraft. In 1999, the TAS news agency published an interview with Dr. Anatoly Koretiev, the director of the Kaldesh Research Center. He talked about a plasma stealth device developed by his organization. In the Journal of Electronic Defense, they reported a plasma cloud generation technology for stealth applications developed in Russia reduces the size of the RCS factor by 100 or 20 decibels. And they went on to say the Russian plasma stealth device had been tested on a Sukhoi Su-217B fighter bomber. And in the United States, the amazingly named Accurate Automation Corporation, AAC of Tennessee, and Thales of France were all working on stealth plasma devices. So how would plasma make something disappear? Well, when electromagnetic waves from a radar hit plasma, it's absorbed. A plasma can absorb all the energy of an incoming radar wave. It's also possible to make a special plasma which can be used to modify or confuse the opponent's radar system. For example, a frequency shifted plasma radiation would frustrate Doppler filtering and make the reflected radar more difficult to distinguish. It turns out that stealth plasma is far better than radar absorbing materials because it's tunable and has a wide band. But the greatest challenge of a plasma stealth system is to generate a large enough area or volume of plasma to cover the complete craft. Plasma stealth technology also faces some technical problems which are very interesting. 
One of the issues is that plasmas tend to glow a bit like a discharge from a fluorescent bulb. So at night, it's possible to spot a plasma shielded craft as it glows. One of the most radar reflective parts of any aircraft is the engine turbojet fan blades. It seems likely that generating radar absorbent plasma around the engine is quite common. And plasma around aircraft has been considered for other purposes other than stealth. It seems that plasma covering the wing can reduce aerodynamic drag. This is called electrohydrodynamic coupling. Tests have been done in a wind tunnel to use a plasma panel to generate a boundary layer over a wing. This demonstrates that it is possible to produce a plasma on the skin of an aircraft. Some Soviet aircraft apparently use polonium isotopes in the wing structure to produce a boundary layer plasma. And we all know about the Skaval. The Skaval is a secret Russian torpedo which can travel at immense speeds underwater by actually running inside a plasma bubble. This is only scratching the surface. But due to your amazing comments, we've all learned something. It's brilliant. Thank you. Now I know that the truth is out there. Yeah.